stands for this MOPS group because a healthy mother gives and receives support. They realize we're all in this together. I love that some of you are gonna watch all of your kids and some of you are gonna go out. That is amazing to me. That is how my sister did date night. Believe it or not, she found another crazy family with four kids and they had eight kids once a month each. And that's how they did date night. Do you know how expensive childcare is for four kids? Some of you probably do. It's, it's very expensive. I mean, it is crazy in our culture, and I, I will get off this soapbox fast. I try to stay off it on Facebook. But there are babysitters who make more an hour than my master's level clinical therapists who are graduating from grad school. They charge more an hour. It is, it is crazy. I want to say to them, you won't make that much anywhere else with a college degree. So why should I be paying it just to have some sanity? I don't understand that in our culture. But their mothers say, I'm not letting her go for less than that. And I'm like, what is going on? But I want to encourage you, offer help and receive it. And let me tell you what, some of you are good at offering help. But I want to encourage you. I have gone through, and y'all know a little bit about this because I shared with you this spring. I've gone through a season where I need some help. I mean, I had major surgery. My husband's twin sister died in January. My son dev developed separation anxiety from that. I developed some healthcare issues from the insides, from the surgery and the stress of it all. And then my grandmother, I haven't seen y'all since then, in June almost died of pneumonia. And she is precious to me, 94 years old. And my dad has one of those families with lots of drama. That is enough to just literally suck the life out of you as it is. I needed some help. I had people say to me, can I bring a meal? And my first thought was, well, the kids might not even eat it. But then my second thought was, yes, if we can get any food out of what is delivered, yes. I had friends who said, hey, I can't do much, but I know you struggle when you're out speaking on this t time to get the kids to school. Could I take them to school that day? Yes. Yes. And so, and, and I, wanna, I wanna tell you, if you're offering help, Try to think of three ways you could practically. Don't just say, I'd be glad to help you if you need it. Because it's really hard for us to say, it's kind of embarrassing sometimes to say, what I really need you to do is just pick the kids up from school today and keep them for an hour so I can just breathe. That's hard to say. But if you offer that, you know, sometimes I'll offer that. Could I help you out? I know you're a new mom. I have a new, one of my daughter's friends, just her mother had a baby. And I, one of the things I could say to her is, can I get the kids one day and just take the older kids home with me? Can I bring y'all a meal? What can I do? Just asking a couple of very specific things. And if you need a lot of help, our family just went through a season where we needed a lot of help. My sister-in-law's husband had already died and there were three kids involved in that. And so in the midst of stories like that, sometimes you need a lot of help. And guess what I had? I had this woman who said, here's what I want to do to help you. I have the spiritual gifts of organization, so I'm going to organize your help. Because one, you suck at receiving it. So I'm going to make it so you don't even have to say yes. And then I'm just going to let you know what's going to come your way. And you're just going to say thank you and smile. And, and that's sometimes what you need is someone to organize your help in the process. So I really want to encourage you to be a person who gives and receives help because it does take a village to raise our kids. And honestly, that's how God created it to be. That's why scripture says it's not good for man to be alone. And then finally, create some great relationships. And you know what? Some of my relationships are virtual. I think Facebook gets a bad rap sometimes these days. There are amazing online women's Bible studies if you can't get to a Bible study. I am part of a Voxer prayer circle and we pray and throw our needs out there and cry in the middle of Oxer some days. I have been guilty. And, and it is helpful. And so I would say, even if, you can't, if you, even if you need to do it in your pajamas, one of the ladies I've referenced, Jill Savage, has a Better Together Mom's Bible Study going on. You read the book, you talk on Facebook, and you share with each other your heart. And sometimes you get a little vulnerable, but it's private, it's locked down. You know, your neighbor's not going to see it, or your mother-in-law, if you happen to reference her in the process. So... I want you as I leave you to think about these aspects of a healthy mom because I know your first thought is how can I come to mops and learn how to be a better mom for my kids and I would say the first thing that you want to do to be a better mom for your kids is be a great woman be a great child of God be be a great person and the other will come very naturally out of that. I'm passionate about that. I believe that to be true because that is what your kids need is just you and not you trying to be everything else, but you just trying to be you with them. And that is good enough.
So let me close this in prayer. Father, in a world, as my sister often says, a bigger, better, more, may we embrace your grace and your love and your peace that comes with enough. And I pray now as we talk about these things in our groups that you would just lead that discussion and that there would be meaningful discussion in that. And I ask these things in Jesus' name.